This is about uh, a type of camera which is extremely popular at one time, uh, the early part of the 20th century. It's a Graflex. It's a large single lens reflex camera. They came uh, available in several different sizes, uh, medium format, 4x5, which is what this camera is, and then a 5x7. And um, I'm going to unfold it and show you what it looks like. These cameras were used by a large, quite a number of uh, very well-known photographers. Uh, Paul Strand used one at times, so did uh, Edward Weston. Um, uh, Dorothea Lang used one. Um, I believe Elliot Porter used one. Not, not everyone used these as their primary camera. Uh, they were uh, mainly used for portraiture. One of the most famous photographs Edward Weston ever did was uh, called Galvan Shooting. It's a man uh, discharging a firearm, and he was able to photograph him just as he released the, uh, just as he uh, pulled the trigger. These cameras have a very large mirror in them. You look down into like the, uh, they're a lot like a Hasselblad. I'll show you how you look down into one of them. And they, um, they have a big advantage in that you can um, instantaneously view what you're about to photograph. Uh, they're probably about the largest single lens reflex uh, camera ever made. I'm going to show you how you would uh, set the shutter on one. They can go all the way up to a thousandth of a second. Let's see if I can get in here fairly close. Still have it in focus. Alright, now you have two different things to consider when you're setting the, the, uh, the speed. And you can see it goes all the way from one one thousandth of a second and you can go down to around a tenth of a second, but you can also have a T setting. And I'll show you how that works. You have the curtain aperture, which is one eighth, three eighths, three quarter, and one and a half, and the tension number, which is, um, of course, one through six. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you set the uh, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. This is how you set the uh, tension number. It's on two, turn it up to three, there's four, five. If you want to release it, you go like that. That sets the tension of the spring. Then, um, let me see what we have up, up top is the curtain aperture. And uh, let's see what I've got here is one and a half, three quarter, three eighths, one eighth. When I release the shutter, it'll drop back down. That brings the mirror down. That's the T setting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the camera around. And you can see, probably, you should be able to see right through the, the lens. Let me uh, move this. And there we go. That's the T setting. You can see directly through the lens. I'll go ahead and lower the mirror. Then I'm going to wind the shutter and just show you some of the, uh, that's the one and a half inch um, gap. It's all in one big shutter. Then we go up to the three quarter. Then you go up to the three eighths and one eighth. I'm going to bring it down to a lower tension. One. Then I'll make a few exposures. going through them. That's, uh, we're almost down to the one and a half. Okay, that's the T setting. And um, this camera's probably made around the 1920s. One other thing I need to show you is the type of film holder it used. 
Now, the film holder looks like an ordinary 4x5 holder, but it's not. It has a groove in it, and this groove is extremely important. Uh, a regular holder will not work. It has to be a Graflex holder. The groove sits in there like that. It goes like that. Now, um, this is the button if you want to do a, a vertical format or a horizontal format. And I'm going to go ahead and show you where the I have to step back and occasionally look at the camera and see if it yeah there's the uh, this is the shutter release and I'll show you the lens I have on the camera as well the lens I have is a uh, Voigtlander Collinear and that's not the original lens but typically with this camera you only have one available uh, focal length it also has the Graflex emblem on top and uh, this lens is 310 millimeters or 31 centimeters and it's a coated lens it's an excellent lens for uh, portraitures twice the normal focal length and this is what the cameras were mainly used for is children uh, dogs uh, people they were extremely well suited to it uh, they were you could handheld hold them because the shutter speed was so high but I typically use it on a tripod and this camera is in excellent shape. The f-stops on this lens are a little unusual. On one side that has f-stops to say uh, 6.3, 9, 12, 18, 25, and 36. I assume those are European numbers. The normal f-stops are on the other side. 8, 11, 16, 22, 45. I'm going to see if I can't uh, I don't think you can see the mirror, unfortunately. Oh, there we are. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to see the mirror through there. And that shows you the ground glass. You're looking up through the ground glass. Of course, when I press the shutter, the mirror will come up. And um, I'm going to turn the camera again. Well, I guess that's about it. These are unusual cameras. Uh, they were, uh, like I say, at one time, probably one of the most popular cameras ever made. And uh, there's a famous photograph of Dorothy, Dorothea Lange uh, sitting on top of a car with a 5x7. And uh, this camera, as I said, is in excellent condition. And I've used it a fair amount. Um, as I said, the main thing it's used for is, I think, portraiture, and uh, it's great for kids. It's probably one of the best uh, camera for children ever. It does have a lot of uh, shortcomings. Uh, Victor Hasselblad uh, based his design on this camera. He actually photographed with a Graflex. He photographed birds, and he saw a lot of the fundamental uh, weaknesses in the camera, and he wanted to... Uh, improve upon the design and his camera had things like an automatic diaphragm and inter a broader range of interchangeable lenses they stopped I think the last Graflex in the 50s and at the very end of the run they did have uh, automatic diaphragm so you could focus uh, wide open and when you expose it would go down to whatever you had set at typically with this camera you would expose uh, focus wide open and expose wide open but for a portraiture, that's that's a pretty good. It's all right to be um, have a shallow depth of field, and this lens is a 6.3. Usually, you would use a faster lens. Well, I guess that's about it. it. Just shows you the basic camera and how it works, and what it was like, and um, that's all. Thanks for watching.